Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of July. Now we are at the midpoint of the year. I'm recording this on the 19th of June. So in a couple of days, I believe on the 21st of June, we have got the summer solstice, the longest day here in the Northern Hemisphere. And if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, if you're down under or any one of those Southern kind of places, then yeah, you guys are having your winter solstice. You're going to have your shortest day. So in just a couple of days, you know, we're going to have uh, the seasons will start to turn. Things will change a little bit. I mean, it's very hot here in the Northern Hemisphere up here in England. It has been really quite hot. Don't know how it is wherever you are you can let me know in the comments below i always love to hear where you're watching from and what it's like there so you're very welcome to share where you are uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the energy for july i don't have a news matchup this time guys it's been pretty slow on the news front I, I haven't really been tuning into news actually so maybe there has been a lot going on i just don't know uh, again, if you would like to share in the comments below if there's anything major happening where you are, but it does still feel a little bit quiet. And I think last month I talked about this. We've been talking about that here on the channel, how things are just eerily quiet. And I, I don't know, they, they still feel pretty quiet to me. I was hoping for a change this month here in July, and we do have Mars moving into Leo. This is a change of energy. This can bring us something a little bit new here but again we've got yes mars moving into leo but then mars will be opposite saturn so still things could be slow for a little while yet um, i know certainly with what i do i have noticed that there haven't been as many bookings things have been a little bit quiet if you would like to book you're very welcome to do so guys it's a good time to book because i'm not overly busy but i'm just saying that to let you know that even i've observed in my business things have been quite slow i've also been watching other vloggers other people that i like to tune into and some of them are saying that in their category of art creative expression you know the different things and, and vloggers that I tune into they are saying that their channels are at a standstill nothing is growing nothing is happening so I am hearing that out and about quite a bit and as well with some of the client readings that I've had recently yeah some of you are experiencing slow growth or not much happening so that's okay guys if that's you if you're finding that yeah when when is the energy going to shift when are things going to change i've got some dates in here we'll have a look at what's going on in the energy for july so anyone who wants to stick around for the intro please do otherwise i'll see you in your mini reading this time we're really going to cover mars saturn opposition for every sign so i think that should be a good overview and this month we are going to have venus retrograde i will cover that in a breakout video so don't worry but let's take a look at the energy for july okay so we've got mars moving into leo from the 1st of july through to the 18th of august for some of you this is going to be really good it will be energizing you will be able to be productive you, you will be able to get things done but still we've got so we have a shift of mars into leo leo ruled by the sun i've had a look at the sun sun i do believe is moving from gemini into cancer this is great so the lord of mars is in you know a, a good positions either if he, sun is in gemini that's good if he's in um, cancer that's good so lord of mars is doing great one would think this would be some dynamic get up and go energy let's get things done energy but the problem is mars across all of july mars is going to be opposed saturn saturn is strong in his own sign aquarius 
and he is casting a very cool gaze in front of him and Mars is going to come into that cool gaze. So how I'm going to interpret this is that this is tension or pressure and I've got the note here this is the kind of tension when you turn a screw and this is unusual kind of imagery here but as I was looking at the transit wheel that was the visual that came into my mind as I was clicking up through the days and I could see Mars is moving into the gaze the cool gaze of Saturn and I got this feeling of t turning the screw and it's like in now where do I know this phrase from I remember a businessman who used to use this phrase and he used to talk about this this was somebody that I worked with a long time ago he would talk about turning the screw in negotiations now I don't know much about this I've never read the art of the deal or any such thing I don't know about this stuff but here's what I think this is it's like in a negotiation if you want someone to get something done you might have to turn up the pressure or make it difficult or you know and that's that turning the screw type imagery there uh, or raising the bar higher or something along these lines I googled the definition of the meaning of the phrase turning the screw I wanted to take a look and this was one of the definitions that came from I believe the Macmillan dictionary which I'm not too familiar with but it says here an occasion when someone puts more pressure on someone else to do something and this got me thinking about a time when so a couple of things have popped into my mind here and I'll give you a couple of examples from my own life so for example I have a boiler that isn't working now I need to get it replaced right and I have been calling various people anyway I've got a brilliant engineer he wants to do the work he's going to be great you know he's, he's really comes very highly recommended he said that well could you call the I don't know I have to call this company because it's a little bit complicated what has to be done here and uh, there are other residents in the building they also want their boiler to be replaced anyway in order to get this done I have to call somebody and ask them could you set up such and such it won't require any money it requires that person to do a bit more work anyway I've kept calling them and they keep avoiding my call so I thought right I'll just have to call every week until this gets done and I know that across all of July I'm, I'm going to be calling I know that because I've had to make a couple of calls already and I know I'm going to have to get quite annoying in order to get this work done and it reminded me of a time where a long time ago I think I looked this up today actually in my own chart I looked it up because the other time I've had to do this and this was in 2015 I'll give you another example from my own life I was working freelance and I was working two days per week somewhere uh, and it was so difficult just to get paid I was only working two days per week I was making just enough money to buy food and pay for my train ticket to get to the job that's about as much money as I was making just just enough to get by and they for many weeks they kept not paying me and this was becoming quite a big problem for me so I had to call and again this was a funny situation where there were several companies in the way and you know I, I just had to keep calling and being very persistent and very annoying and I kept calling kept calling kept calling anyway eventually my bills got paid so that I could eat but apparently there was something like 200,000 pounds blocked that because of my persistence and that I kept calling kept calling kept calling that 200,000 that big lot of money moved and some of my little money to pay for my food came from that but a whole load of other people who wanted their bills to be paid they finally got paid and some of them were waiting a year or two 
And because my case was so urgent and I was literally eating from that money, I was the one who kept putting the pressure on people. So the reason I give you those two stories, and it's interesting because I looked up those dates when I was at that company and when I was doing that phone calling, because I remember, and it was a Saturn Mars opposition at that time in the sky. So this is true. And it's funny because I'm having to be this annoying person again. I've not had to do this really very much in my life, like keep calling someone repeatedly. And I know, and, and I know they're avoiding me and they know they're avoiding me. It's, it's all that sort of thing. So this visual of turning the screw has come into mind and this is matching up. Uh, and as I say, I've got a couple of real life examples here where this is true. I'd love to hear in the comments below if you're dealing with any situation where it's just not moving, it's not budging and you're having to be this annoying person who, you know, you're, you're having to put pressure on someone maybe. So I've got here um, the note pressure is being put on you or equally you are putting pressure on someone or something because movement is required and the thing is we've got Mars in Leo that's energy. We've also got Jupiter and Rahu casting aspect. I'm pretty sure they are casting aspect. I'll double check this while I'm editing. But I'm pretty sure they're casting aspect onto Mars. So Mars is powered up here. Mars is in Leo. Lord of Leo Sun is in good dignity as well. You know, there's energy here. So we have energy, but we've got Saturn's gaze. We've got blockage energy. We've got delay energy. We've got no, you can't do it energy. There's a cool energy here. You're fired up. You're ready to go. You want to make something happen and yet you can't. So there's this kind of energy going on and it might require just a calm, patient sort of chipping away. It's like, okay, I'll call you every day. I'll be annoying, but it, you know, in a calm way, <laughs> in a sort of low stress, chilled out way. Uh, you know, you might be able to get something big to move in that way. So this is all really interesting for the month of July. Now Venus will retrograde from the 23rd of July to 3rd September this year. And that is big because I do think she is, and I do call her she, I know here in Vedic astrology it's a he, but I say she because I just like that there are female energies, Moon and Venus represented, you know, of the nine. Come on, we've only got two representing the feminine energy. But that just shows how strong feminine energy is. We only need two planets, don't we? But yes, he, she, you can use whatever label you like. Um, but Venus is retrograde from 23rd July to 3rd September this year. I will cover that in a breakout video but just quickly what can I say about that here we are going to have I'm pretty sure Venus is retrograding out of I think it's is it out of Leo and back into Cancer I'm pretty sure I've got that right but um, while Venus is doing that we have some of this Mars Saturn opposition going on and so in the context of relationships Mars Saturn opposition is an interesting energy because that in men anyway it can make them feel like they don't want to express their emotions it can make it really hard for them to share their true feelings and things like that if you've got Mars lauded by Saturn or Saturn lauded by Mars or a strong Saturn Mars conjunction in a birth chart and if you're a man then it might be difficult for you to speak up about feelings so that could be I'll cover this in the Venus retrograde video but that that can impact uh, the Venus retrograde there I've got the note this is a time of reviewing lessons in love yes it is and if you're single well if, if you're single or with someone it doesn't matter I mean it's a great time of reviewing how you love yourself self-love self-care so important self-worth as well I think we've covered all the notes there yeah we have so that's 
that's the overview for July okay that wasn't too long that's good so yeah that's the energy for July and if you would like to stick around for your mini reading we are now going to take a look at every single sign and we're going to see this Mars Saturn opposition per sign so if you're ready to go through the whole zodiac shall we do this 15 minutes yep let's do it we are now going to welcome Aries Aries welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Aries ascendant Aries moon or Aries sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so Mars steps into Leo in your fifth house on the 1st of July and he is going to be opposite Saturn for the whole month so pressure could be placed on you from your peers at work or from your employees if you manage other people uh, pressure could also be placed on you by your children as well or you are placing pressure on one of these people okay there's some pressure type of relationship or build up that's happening across this month the other thing is you could also be feeling the pressure to expand yourself creatively yet you find it hard to find the time or there's something here around yeah you're putting pressure on yourself to be more creative or to get more of your own work done you could be feeling the pressure of the lack of something in your life as well so that could be the lack of work or lack of relationship as well or lack of romance or love in your life something like that there's just something about pressure this month so observe that see how it plays out in your life and know that it's it's an illusion okay this is just an, an illusion what, what do they call it Leela between Mars and Saturn right it's an illusion it's Maya it's it's not real and know that this pressure will end uh, definitely 22 July onwards it will start to die down and uh, 18th August I think it is onwards you know it, it'll shift and change so it's it's just for a time now on the 3rd of July there is a full moon in Sagittarius Purva Ashada Nakshatra happening in your ninth house so this is a really good time to reflect on purity in your life purity that's such a word that we connect with Purva Shada Nakshatra it's very much about purity and influences I've got here at this full moon it's a good time to observe what influences your intellectual development and do you want that to you know yeah is it, t is it time to change something up is it time to find a new guru or try something different or in terms of your intellectual diet you know is there time to stop watching something or cut something out or change some, something along those lines uh, you might find that some of that shifts around this time now on the 17th of July there is a new moon in Cancer Purnavasu Nakshatra happening in your fourth house so this is a really lovely time to connect with your mother perhaps you spend more time with her or you do something with her uh, and if you're not able to do that do something nurturing for yourself at home so this is a beautiful new moon to be at home to be cozy to cook up something beautiful to really relax really unwind Aries besides all the pressure of Mars and Saturn it is looking like a good month ahead for you I want to thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Taurus Taurus welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Taurus ascendant Taurus moon or Taurus sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so Mars steps into Leo in your fourth house on the 1st of July Mars will be opposite Saturn and we're going to have this effect of pressure so pressure could be placed on something related to your home uh, for example you have to put pressure on the plumber to come to your place or something like that there's some kind of and if you watch the introduction you hear that I talked about 
I've had to be putting pressure on the building management or whatever it is here and I have to yeah just to I don't know I, it's all too complicated for me but I, I have some phone calling to do and <laughs> yeah it, it, it'll happen eventually uh, but it is that thing where you have to just keep chipping away or keep pestering someone or, or somebody could be pestering you as well that's a possibility here too uh, now there could also be pressure in the relationship with your mother at this time um, or it could be a, the pressure coming from expectations of mother or something like that again with some of these things you can meditate on them you can reflect on them especially if it's something like your perceived expectations that you think are coming from her maybe you you contemplate on that and maybe that's that's a story you're telling yourself you know that if you come into present time that's outdated and that's why being in the now moment is really good and when we really observe things in the now moment we discover wow that was that was just a story you know sometimes sometimes awareness we get our aha the awareness happens the dynamic drops away forever that happens sometimes like that sometimes it doesn't but just observe see where the pressure is in your life this month is what I'm saying now also you might be feeling more tired and run down at this time don't overdo it definitely rest okay if you're feeling tired uh, you're one of the signs here where yeah you, you could be feeling physically tired so don't don't push yourself now 3rd July we've got a full moon in Sagittarius Purva Ashada Nakshatra happening in your eighth house so this is an interesting one for you because the full moon is on there's going to be all this moonlight you're going to see and gain clarity on what occult tools really help you and you might be more insightful than normal as well but in terms of looking at what occult tools really do help you you're going to get some awareness on that and it's good periodically to question okay is this system good for me is this beneficial is this you know should I be consuming less of that kind of content or whatever it is that's going to be something that you can look at here on the 3rd of July and on the 17th of July we have a new moon in Cancer Punava Sunakshatra happening in your third house so you might be quite insightful for your friends at this time uh, this could be a time where you get ideas or you get insights for yourself and others and definitely when we're looking at others this is friends siblings for sure so Taurus it is looking like it could be a month that has pressure in it if that's the case go gentle be slow don't don't expect too much from this month uh, if that's how it works for you but it's besides that there's some really nice energy here and especially with the full moon and new moon you're really going to be quite insightful so the slow energy is contemplative energy it's good and work with that and i actually think with all these insights and downloads that could come in on the 3rd of july and 17th july this could be quite a profound month for you taurus all right well thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Gemini Ascendant, Gemini Moon or Gemini Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Mars is going to step into Leo, which is in your third house on the 1st of July. This is a very good transit for you, Gemini. I'm so happy. You're one of the lucky three who's running a good transit with Mars so enjoy this energy now you can achieve things at work you can get work if you're looking for work good time to network as well you could uh, increase contacts and things like that now the only thing that you have kind of that could be a little bit challenging is Mars is you know he's going to be opposite Saturn Saturn's got this cool gaze you know and he's Saturn's powerful he's in Aquarius he's busy working he's, he's doing a lot 
cleaning up one of his own houses. So Saturn is strong. And Mars is going to be strong too in Leo, energized, but opposite this cool gaze. It's not too fun for Mars. So things might take longer. You might suffer some delay energies, but recognize that a delay is Saturn gifting you time. So be sure to receive that gift well and use it to polish up your skills. This could be a time where you, this could be a month of excellence for you if you really work with these energies. So regardless, your Mars, your can-do power, you know, that, that Mars masculine principle of I can do it, you know, I want to get on with it, that's in great shape okay across this whole month so you can do a lot you can achieve a lot there might be delays but don't let that stop you uh all right third july full moon in sagittarius purva ashada nakshatra happening in your seventh house so something will become very clear in your love life you're going to understand something quite deeply about your love life or about matters of the heart you might get some big aha moment happen here on the 3rd of July and on the 17th of July we have a new moon in Cancer Punavasu Nakshatra happening in your second house so this is a great time to nurture yourself at home cook up something delicious be with the family you might also be quite inspired you might get new ideas and you might get in particular some new ideas that might help you make more money or even save money so yeah these insights or ideas could be really good they could also be creative ideas but that you turn into something that later on uh, helps you expand your wealth in some way but gemini you are the one of the lucky three as i say to be running a very good mars transit so please do make the most of that all right well thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking the time. We're okay. Right. So Mars steps into Leo in your second house on the 1st of July. So there's going to be some pressure here for every single sign. You know, Mars opposite Saturn, there's pressure somewhere in life. Now for you, this is going to be in regards to your family. So you might find that family is putting pressure on you. Uh, at this time could also be pressure coming from in-laws as well um, equally you might need to put pressure on somebody so if nobody's putting pressure on you maybe you're the one having to put pressure on people so maybe you need to be putting pressure on some family member to get on with something or to do something that's been pending for a while this might be a month where the, the frustration builds and you're just like oh I have to get on with that or I have to ha have them get on with it so that then I can do my thing or whatever it is I've got here the note be gentle and let go if you have to okay so you might try 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 nothing happens uh, you might even have to let go and you might have to let go I've got here the energy will calm down after Mars passes Saturn and we're looking at about the 22nd to the 23rd of July I do think that Mars should be like that's kind of the energy will crescendo across the month and then 22nd 23rd of July onwards that energy of pressure should start to reduce so I've got here also don't push anything on the 27th, 28th or 29th of July because the moon will be debilitated across some of those days. So yeah, it's, it's a tricky spot that you're in, Cancer. I've got here, this is better energy for work this month. So if you're looking for good energy, like, you know, where, where do I put my effort? Uh, you've got Rahu and Jupiter in the 10th house. So better to focus on your work, put more energy into work. This is a good work month for you. But family could be 
pressure cooker energy with the family there so just uh, and as I say be gentle and let go if if things you know you're nudging or trying a bit of something if it's really not working let go just let go <laughs> always good energy uh, good advice that let go I always think of Dr. David Hawkins he's always telling everyone let go <laughs> Now, 3rd July, full moon in Sagittarius, Purva Ashada Nakshatra. This is happening in your 6th house. So 3rd July, we've got a full moon in your 6th house. So this is a really great time to recognize just how far you've come regarding your work. Okay, it's a really good time to look back purely at what you have done and what you've achieved and maybe celebrate that in some way or treat yourself or, you know, that this is a good time to yeah I, I think sort of recognize yourself recognize how far you've come you know so so often we're so busy looking at where we want to go that we forget to be very grateful actually for where we are how far we've come you know and and some of that energy is needed because that gratitude will will help inspire the next steps as well now on the 17th of July there is a new moon in Cancer Puna Vasu Nakshatra happening in your first house. So this is really this is your new moon guys. This is this is huge. So definitely keep an ideas notebook with you, a little journal, any of that. Uh, you will have lots of new inspirations, new ideas coming through at this time. You'll be insightful, you'll get downloads, you'll get all kinds of things if you are in the now and you're hoping for that so keep your eyes peeled on the 17th of july what new ideas come to you around then but cancer i think this is going to be a good month it is a pressure cooker month with the family i know that that could be tough but i think your work definitely put your energy into your work and and spend a bit of time to celebrate spend a bit of time to recognize how far you have come as well because you've done so much work cancer across your life you've been working really hard it's and every now and then you do have to stop and you do have to reflect on how you are grateful for the things you yourself have done all right cancer well thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome leo leo welcome thank you so much for joining so this is leo ascendant Leo Moon or Leo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now Mars steps into your sign, Leo, in your first house on the 1st of July. Wow, this is pretty amazing. So this month there could be pressure on you from your spouse uh, or from your business partner. Could also be from your public or fans if you're on social media or from the marketplace if you're a business owner or from your work the other thing is that you might find you might discover all the pressure that you put on yourself how about that you know you, you probably do put pressure on yourself to achieve or something like that now I've got here equally you could be putting pressure on your partner at this time be aware of that and I've got the note here, there could be some situation which requires a tiny bit of effort from you consistently. Like you have to chip away to make it happen or to make something big happen. There's something like that that could be happening in your world. Now on the 3rd of July, there's a full moon in Sagittarius Purva Ashada Nakshatra happening in your fifth house. So this is a time to celebrate your creative achievements or be proud of the accomplishments made by your children so this is a really lovely full moon it's a good moon to as I say kind of celebrate or recognize how far you've come recognize that you've taken a really big journey look at that we've got a full moon in Sagittarius so that's why I'm kind of looking at this concept of see how far you've come a big journey has been made and you know sometimes when sometimes when you're climbing up a mountain it's really good to at the midway point and by the way I never climb mountains I'm thinking of a hill that I used to walk up in Sydney Australia which was like my mountain I was just I would just walk up that hill to get to the bus stop so but for me that's a mountain and when so it was very motivating halfway 
I would turn around and I'd look and I'd look down at how far I'd walked and because it's in a 35 degree heat or something and you know, I'm really tired but that it was always very motivating to see wow I've walked so much and just that little pause and looking back and I've done this much would help me do the rest of the mountain the hill <laughs> this short walk to the bus stop but yeah um, in my world that tiny little hill is a is a mountain uh, but this is this is what I'm saying here with you know your 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 uh, fifth house your full moon here on, on the 3rd of July take a bit of time look back look back at the big journey you've you've already made now on the 17th of July there is a new moon in Cancer Puna Vasu Nakshatra this is happening in your 12th house so definitely keep a dream journal okay I have actually been doing this I I think I said in one of the last monthly is that I always tell everyone to keep a dream journal and I never do it myself I've finally been doing it and it is bonkers like I, what I do is I'll turn on my phone in the morning and I'm half asleep and I'll do the voice recorder thing and I'll actually speak out my dream into the voice recorder and some of my dreams are so crazy I have re-listened like two or three days later or a week later some of them are they're hilarious they're really funny so try it if you want to give yourself a laugh you can record the dreams that way or you could just keep a dream journal I've got here you could be getting insights or inspirations through your dream state so definitely check that out Leo but if you want to try the voice recorder thing give it a go if nothing else you will give yourself something to have a good chuckle about but I want to thank you so much for tuning in Leo and we are now going to welcome Virgo Virgo welcome thank you so much for joining I'm checking the time I think we're okay now Virgo this is Virgo ascendant Virgo moon or Virgo sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so now Mars steps into Leo in your 12th house on the 1st of July so just very generally at a high level this could actually impact your sleep possibly uh, possibly see how that goes but what you might find is that if you exercise well during the day or you're very busy during the day don't worry you'll sleep just fine if Mars is kind of yeah all that activity you know because Mars can be restless in the 12th sometimes so if you burn off your energy during the day you'll sleep well don't worry about that uh, now I've got here at work yes there could be some pressure this month this is a pressure kind of a month so perhaps you are putting pressure on someone or someone is putting pressure on you and this is at work okay um, equally this could be pressure perceived from competition or peers at work again I say that's perceived because you're just perceiving that maybe no one's putting pressure on you at work but you're perceiving something okay and just the awareness of that is very often enough to dissolve um, the pattern so just become aware observe see see how this plays out I've got the note here work in the Saturnian way so be humble chip away a little bit each day and you will be fine I've got the note here this pressure really starts to to die down after the 22nd of July and the energy will shift in quite a fundamental way I do believe 18th August onwards and if there's a work situation and there's some kind of pressure or something like this see if you can ask for time you might be able to buy time because let's not forget Saturn is casting his gaze so if you need extra time you might be able to get it okay so now 3rd July we've got a full moon in Sagittarius Purva Ashada Nakshatra happening in your fourth house so this is a great time to be at home hi Virgo sorry about that I think I said this is a great time to be at home so this is 3rd July full moon Sagittarius Purva Ashada Nakshatra definitely so this is just a lovely time to be at home cook delicious foods relax nurture yourself if you can connect with your mother or spend time with mother 
So that's a wonderful thing to do at this time. Now on the 17th of July we've got a new moon happening in Cancer Punarvasu Nakshatra happening in your 11th house. So this is a really good time to wish big for what you'd like to have happen in the future. Plant a seed and let the dream go. So it's really quite interesting this time I've really been focusing all the new moon content uh, if you've been watching the whole video it's all been about insights actually but here with with you Virgo I'm going for the good old-fashioned wish for something big because this new moon is happening in your 11th house here you can you really can uh, plant a seed or, or wish for whatever it is that you want to have materialize this is a good time for that uh, you could be insightful if we're looking at the insights and all that kind of thing and the downloads and what information is coming through you could be getting well you could be getting business ideas or ideas on how to generate new opportunities or bring in more wealth and abundance uh, you could also be getting insights to do with your network circle or your friends or your older siblings so that's a possibility but we've got the 11th house here we've got a new moon here so Virgo why don't you wish for something big whatever it is that you want plant the seed and then let go see what happens but Virgo I'm liking the look of this month for you you do have yeah Mars there in the 12th but then you've got Saturn really strong there in the 6th so overall for work this is an industrious time for you. This is a time for you to do well and get ahead. But if you're finding that there is some pressure, you know where that's coming from. The other place, I mean, you could also be feeling the pressure of the lack of something. And you could be feeling the pressure of the lack of work. If your work has slowed down or you don't have as much work right now, you know you might feel the pressure of that but this will pass this this as i say this this time period is is limited things will change all right virgo thank you so much for tuning in we are now going to welcome libra libra welcome thank you so much for joining so this is libra ascendant libra moon or libra sun as per the sidereal vedic system of astrology so now Mars steps into Leo in your 11th house on the 1st of July. This is a really great transit where you can get ahead. Libra, you are one of the lucky three signs that is running a great Mars transit. So make the most of this energy. Now Mars is going to be opposite Saturn's cool gaze. Uh, so don't worry if there are delays this month. Remember a delay is Saturn gifting you time. So with that gift of time, you can polish up your skills, you can become head and shoulders above everyone else. Got the note here, you can grow your social media platforms at this time. You can discover new opportunities to expand uh, yourself, to bring in more wealth. And at times, yes, you may feel pressure, but keep going, you've got great energy here. Now on the 3rd of July, we have a full moon in Sagittarius Purva Ashada Nakshatra happening in your third house. So you're going to get visibility on some issue to do with friends or siblings at this time. It's a good time to socialize and it's a good time to socialize and also be careful about the influences or the people that you surround yourself with. This is Purva Ashada Nakshatra. Purva Shadha Nakshatra is all about purity. It is all about, you know, um, making sure you've you've got good influences around you, that you're you're a good influence to people, all that kind of thing. So just bear that in mind. But yeah, have fun. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry about that too. Just have fun. On on the third of July, full moon. Have fun. Just do that. Seventeenth uh, July, we've got a new moon in Cancer Purnavasu Nakshatra happening in your 10th house. So you might get ideas on a new work project that you'd like to nurture or cultivate or just any project. It could, be, it could even be a house project as well. So if you're not working at this time, 
that's fine. But there's some kind of new project that you really want to start. You might get ideas on that at this time. So just observe, see what new ideas comes your way. Libra, I'm loving the look of this month for you. You are, as I say, one of the lucky three signs that has got good Mars energy and your full moon and new moon is, is looking really good too. So thank you so much for stopping by. We are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Scorpio Ascendant, Scorpio Moon or Scorpio Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now we've got Mars stepping into Leo in your 10th house on the 1st of July. So an issue at work or if you're not working at this time, it could be just in an area of your life where you are visible and you are seen. So there's some issue that's at play here and somewhere where you are stuck. I've got the note here, you might be putting effort or pressure so that the situation shifts. Uh, now equally, someone at work or someone from a big organization or something like this could be putting pressure on you. So there is a situation where you may be putting pressure on somebody or and or someone is, is putting pressure on you. Uh, now this could also be pressure from mother, okay, or from mother's expectations, what you perceive her expectations have been. Something in connection with mother could also be putting pressure on you. I've got the note here, do your best at this time, uh, but go slow, be gentle with yourself, be gentle with others. And it is that thing that if you watch the introduction I did, I talked about how, you know, um, I had to put pressure on this company to pay my bills and these bills were just for my food and transport to that workplace. It wasn't, you know, any large sum of money or anything like that. But I had to put pressure on them. And yeah, we can do that in a gentle, calm way. But, you know, we, we have to be persistent. We have to, there's, so there's something about persistency or pers persistency, is that a word? I don't even know. But you ha you're having to be persistent this month. There's something like this uh, where it could be your effort. And it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you have to like um, be out of character or be angry or mean or no. If you're a calm, chilled out person, just do it in a calm, chilled out way, that kind of thing. I've got the note here, the tension of this month should really start to ease 22 July onwards. So keep an eye on that. But the energy will shift altogether sort of mid-August, I do believe. But I'll be covering that in the, in the monthly videos. Let's take a look here. We've got 3rd July, full moon in Sagittarius, Purva Ashada Nakshatra happening in your second house. So 3rd July, full moon is happening in your second house. Have the note here you'll see something come full circle in relation to your family or your extended family and then on the 17th of july we've got a new moon in cancer punarva sunakshatra happening in your ninth house so you might get new ideas on what you'd like to learn next you might get new ideas on a subject you're learning you also might get new ideas on how to learn something better as well and that's something that I keep meaning to improve in my life actually like um, well I started today there's a new astrology book I have on my Kindle which I bought months ago and I just haven't opened it and today I just said to myself go to the park and read two or three pages and I did I made a start so but I am wanting to do this thing where I there's this guy on YouTube he's called Ali Abdal and he teaches you how to learn a subject more effectively. So I want to get into some of those videos. I just haven't got around to it. So I feel like with this new moon, this is that kind of new moon where you will, maybe you'll start something new, but it's in relation to learning, skilling up, how you learn, how you're excited about learning or you know, making it fun or um, all that kind of thing. 
17th July your ninth house is a new moon it's exciting time Scorpio let's take a look at this yeah it's I feel like it's going to be a bit of a mixed month for you I do like the look of the the full moon and the new moon for you but this Mars energy there is some tension there so take care of yourself be gentle you know go slow and this is a kind of uh, what uh, what I'm discovering about um, you see the other thing is we've got here you I've got the note here um, I knew that this little sticky note here would apply to some people this might apply to someone here I've got the note here you might feel the pressure of the lack of something so if you're not working at this time you might feel the pressure of that but know that that's an illusion just know that that is illusion this time frame will come to an end as I say 22 July onwards it will ease 18th July onwards it will shift altogether so it's going to change and the other thing is when we recognize the illusion of something that's when we're really in the now moment and I'm just going to say this because I remember last time Scorpio we did have a little bit of a chat didn't we and I think that some of you wrote in the comments below hello to those of you lovely Scorpio people who wrote last time yeah um and I think I had a chat about if you're okay for a week or so I'm going to up that even more if you're okay in the now just be in the now I was watching Eckhart Tolle I'll put his name on the screen watch him and he talks about um, this thing of being in the now and breathing deeply in and if you're okay in the now then you're probably more okay than you realize Scorpio I'm going to give you lots of love take care out there you're going to be fine and we are now going to welcome Sagittarius Sagittarius welcome thank you so much for joining this is a Sagittarius ascendant Sagittarius moon or Sagittarius sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so now Mars steps into Leo in your ninth house on the 1st of July so there might be pressure on you at work from your bosses you see because Mars is going to be opposite Saturn there's going to be this Mars Saturn pressure situation so pressure could be coming to you from work from your bosses equally there could be pressure within the relationship with your father so either father putting pressure on you it could even be you putting pressure on your father as well or it could be father's expectations you feel the pressure of that this month I've got the note here you or it's so either someone's putting pressure on you or you are putting pressure on someone or something at work this could also be in your friend circle or connected with a sibling as well now on the 3rd of July there's a full moon in Sagittarius Purvaksha the nakshatra in your first house Sagittarius this is your full moon so you might see a really massive cycle close at this time a really good time to observe your life and just see what that cycle is that is ready to close out and on the 17th of July there is a new moon in Cancer Puna versus Sunakshatra happening in your eighth house so you might be especially insightful at this time you might even be a little bit psychic for yourself for other people um, good time to keep a dream a dream diary or a, a dream book or a note journal with you or something like that I think I told was it Leo who did I tell somebody else I told someone else that I did the whole dream journal thing I recorded my dream onto a voice note in my phone and I listened to it a few days later it was hilarious it's really really funny so I recommend you do that I've actually got I think two or three dreams that I've recorded in there now um, it's actually kind of fun to do so give that a go if you would like to I finally done it after years of recommending to everybody <laughs> write down your dreams or record your dream I have now started doing that and it's it's kind of cool um, and it does show you things about your subconscious mind actually especially if you're doing your spiritual work and you are really committed to improving yourself or changing a pattern or figuring something out it's it's good because it it does when you kind of psychoanalyze it later you will get some ahas come from that so yeah 
give it a go Sagittarius all right thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Capricorn Capricorn welcome thank you so much for joining I'm just taking the time we're all good all right so now we've got Mars stepping into Leo in your eighth house on the 1st of July so you might feel that there's we've got Mars Saturn opposition you see so you might feel like you're under pressure by in-laws or by your family equally you might need to put pressure on someone in the family to get something done this could be a really good month to take time out if you can okay um, I've got the note here go slow be gentle and if someone is putting pressure on you then know that you, you've got Saturn energy here you can take extra time you can see where you can buy yourself some time and I've got here yeah if there are delays or any of that that you experience this month uh, this may frustrate you but just go with it okay this is a month to just we just have to go with what is and if there are delays and stuck energies it's we just have to be with that for, for a bit a little while longer I was hoping that this month would be the month that things would be a lot more go 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 but it's yeah I'm, I'm not getting that vibe I've got the note here you will be busy later if you are experiencing a time where you're not as busy as you'd like to be I've got here things will start getting better after July 22 July let's observe that let's see if that's truly the case I know 22 July onwards things should start to improve and then 18th August is when this Mars Saturn opposition goes up until then so yeah but if if you've got time where not much is happening a great activity for you at this time Capricorn is clutter clearing do some clutter clearing you get really organized with your space and with your stuff and be on top of everything that would be good with this Mars energy here in the eighth now on the 3rd of July we have a full moon in Sagittarius Purva Ashada Nakshatra this is happening in your 12th house so this is a really good time to pause to reflect and to recognize how far you've come spiritually and this is quite a good thing to do like if you look back you know 10 years ago what did you believe then you look back 20 years ago what did you believe then and sometimes when I look back at things and I look at back to see how far we've all come and you know things that we're finding out now and the various rabbit holes that we're going down and we're becoming awakened and enlightened in so many ways and we weren't like that when I look at the 80s wow we were not like that as a society were we you know we believed a lot of things uh, of, of the way the world is and we were happy with it you know but now it's um, there's been so much growth and it's pretty incredible to just stop and pause and see and look back and see how much change and awakening we've gone through it's it's pretty incredible actually I've got the note here it's a great day on the 3rd of July for you to purely indulge in your spirituality if you can okay or around that full moon that 3rd of July full moon it doesn't have to be on that day it can be around that time but if you want to indulge in your spirituality that's that's going to be a lovely thing to do now on the 17th of July there is a new moon in Cancer Puna Vasunakshatra happening in your seventh house so you might get some insights or some aha moments will happen regarding your love life uh, this could be insights about your partner if you are in a relationship at this time so Capricorn I'm wishing you well take care Capricorn uh, yeah I know that th things have been challenging but this is this is just one of those months to just just go with it and energy will shift energy will shift it will happen all right thank you so much for tuning in we are now going to welcome Aquarius Aquarius welcome thank you so much for joining just taking the time uh, all right we've got Mars stepping into Leo in your seventh house on the 1st of July now Mars is going to be opposite Saturn's cool gaze there in Aquarius so you might feel under pressure from your partner equally 
you might be putting pressure on your partner as well so just bear in mind it could go either way now if you're single you might find that your loneliness will maybe potentially feel a bit oppressive at this time you know if you're wanting to be with someone you, you don't have someone you know that loneliness feeling might might be quite strong um, but this is a good energy you've got good energy here for getting things done I've got the note here work the Saturnian way chip away a tiny bit each day just chip away towards your goals I've also got the note here take small breaks through your spiritual side and, and that's an interesting thing to say now the reason I say that is because Saturn is lording your 12th here okay so there you will be able to find relief in small little breaks you know um, just take a little break watch a spiritual video or have a walk in the park or listen to some audio while you're having a walk or something like that do something small but that gives you a little break in the day that's going to be important this month now on the 3rd of July there is a full moon in Sagittarius Purva Ashada Nakshatra happening in your 11th house so something may illuminate in your professional network circle and the other thing that this full moon is really good for here on the 3rd of July it's a really great time to be grateful for all that you've achieved across your whole life to really look back and see well what have I done how far have I come this is a Sagittarius full moon you, know, you want to see the journey and when you're going up a big mountain it's really nice to or a small hill on the way to your bus stop which is what I do um, it's really nice when you're walking up that hill to just pause at the midway point and look down it's very motivating when you see how far you've come it really does motivate you to go all the way so on the 17th of July we've got a new moon in Cancer Puna Vasunakshatra happening in your sixth house so you might get insights or new ideas for your career and for what you'd like to do in the future as well Aquarius I'm liking the look of the energy here for you uh, take these little breaks as I said take take small breaks where you where you do nothing even you know maybe where you just breathe you just enjoy breathing and having the Sun on your face that's just a beautiful thing to do I did a bit of that this afternoon and it felt great so thank you for tuning in Aquarius we are now going to welcome Pisces Pisces welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Pisces ascendant Pisces moon or Pisces Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so now Mars steps into Leo in your sixth house on the 1st of July we've got this Mars Saturn opposition this month and it's creating pressure in some area of your life so now you might feel under pressure at work or in a situation where there is competition legal case is one example uh, equally you might need to put pressure on somebody at work so that they get their thing done because when they get their thing done then you can get your thing done it's that kind of thing going on here I've got the note here go slowly be gentle with yourself and be gentle with others but do be persistent if that's something you need to do now energy will really start to improve after the 22nd of July okay and, it, and this energy will shift very much mid-August onwards now the 3rd of July we've got a full moon in Sagittarius Purva Ashada Nakshatra happening in your 10th house so something at work comes to full circle maybe you complete a big cycle in regards to your work or career um, this if this is not to do with work because you're not working at this time this is just something to do with your life as a whole possibly or the part of your life that you share with the outside world there's some something coming to completion here is what we may see on the 3rd of July now on the 17th of July there's a new moon in Cancer Punarva Sunakshatra happening in your fifth house so you could get lots of creative ideas lots of downloads lots of insights could occur to you at this time 
This could also be a time where you possibly, if you're wanting to get pregnant, this is a good time for that kind of thing. Equally, if you don't want to do that, maybe, you know, take uh, extra care. But definitely when it comes to creative ideas, insights, downloads, you're going to have, you know, a, a strong connection uh, to to the other side. So make sure you have a little, you know, notepad and pen by your side so you can capture those ideas but Pisces and anyone else who has watched the entire video I want to thank you so much for being here for tuning in we have got the solstice coming up in a couple of days and I might even be going somewhere I am actually going somewhere with a friend of mine uh, I'll take the camera and if I film something and post it, I'm not sure, let's see, I, I might film something, but equally, if I don't, then I don't. But who knows, maybe I will uh, post something there. But I am doing something that's kind of related to the solstice, I think. My friend tells me that this place where we're going, they do some kind of celebrations or rituals at that place. For the solstice i don't know we'll see we'll see what happens but stay tuned on the channel anyway because i'm gonna have new content coming up soon but yeah i want to thank you all so much for being here let me know how you get on in the comments i love reading your comments please do like share and subscribe all that wonderful stuff and i look forward to seeing you next time mm -hmm.